finally here. Here we are at the road to the 107th Grey Cup. Here we are at the final destination before the hardware is handed out right here in Calgary. Me personally, I don't need to go anywhere as it's nice to actually be home for the Grey Cup this year. And uh, I definitely also like to travel here but it's also nice to stay home and have the festivities come to me and have a short commute to the game here. So uh, here we are. It's time to preview the 107th Grey Cup here. And, you know, of course I dream that my Calgary Stampeders would be in it and have a chance to win it at home here. But fortunately things did not work out that way, especially in the West semifinal there. But I could say this is my Constellation matchup because uh, I did uh, kept thinking I'd settle for Winnipeg Blue Bombers and Hamilton Tiger Cats Grey Cup here because, well, somebody's going to have to win. Something's got to give here as when I get to preview the matchup here. And uh, just quickly go over the two final games on how we got here. And uh, there's definitely some history with these two teams. But the big history being that both of these teams have gone a long time without winning a championship. And one fan base is going to be so often happy. They'll be happier than that three-legged lab that I see sometimes going to work that's going out for a walk in the morning. While another fan base, sadly, is going to be lining up to uh, grab a case of beer and crying it for yet another year. But uh, this is my Constellation matchup, and I'm... Almost happy with how it turns out here. So I'll bring up my notes here and I'll do the same format as I did when I previewed the semi-final games, final game, and the final year with a couple extras here. So, uh, like I said, this year is the 107 Grey Cup. Right here in Calgary, my home city, will feature the Hamilton Tiger Cats and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So first, let's go back to the Eastern File here. As you could say, the Eastern File ultimately kind of went as expected here as the Hamilton Tiger Cats defeated the Hampton Eskimos 36 to 16 here. So the Hampton Eskimos once again did not uh, become the first crossover team to get to the Grey Cup. But they had a nice effort and uh, eventually Hamilton pulled away in the second half. So the one out of Sumatra didn't exactly work here. Hamilton did lead 23-13 uh, there at halftime. So all the scoring, a lot of the scoring happened early in the game here. And I'll summarize it. It was a little bit of a defensive struggle there in the third quarter. But uh, Hamilton was able to subdue the Hamilton Eskimos. And then Hamilton made the big plays and got the big scores late to punch their ticket to the Grey Cup right here in Calgary. So... Uh, Go over a few numbers here. Hamilton Tiger Cats. They were led by Dane Evans. Who thought that? That you would tell me that the Hamilton Tiger Cats were going to be right here in Calgary. They would finish the season where they finished, and they did without Jeremiah Mazzoli. You would think, huh? But Dane Evans, he was 21 for 36. He threw for 386 yards, had a touchdown and an interception there. Running back, well, Terrell Sutton actually did not dress. So Cameron Marshall actually dressed. He had uh, nine carries for 31 yards here, so it wasn't a big rushing day for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Seaver here, well, Braylon Addison, he uh, led the way with seven catches for 130 yards. And Brandon Banks, he had four catches for 100 yards, including one amazing touchdown. I mean, man, Brandon Banks, he's definitely one guy that I would definitely be nice to see him get a Grey Cup wing ring there. I mean... As much as I was happy how things played out five years ago, you had to feel sorry for Brandon Banks there where he looked like he returned the touchdown back, one return for a touchdown, and only had a legal block to wipe it out, and he was pounding the uh, field crying. That, uh, and that was five years ago. And so, uh, But Brandon Banks, he definitely is a very exciting player here. And then Frankie Williams, actually, not only he uh, returns punts and kicks offs, as well as potentially Brandon Banks for Hamilton. He had a big game on defense with eight tackles and a forced fumble. So a big game for Frank Williams. And then Larum Harau, who, uh, the kicker, he was 4-4, including the longest field goal at 48 yards there. 
So on the empty net, side of the ball here, well, Trevor Harris, he, uh, he was 29 for 41 for 319 yards. He threw a touchdown, but threw for two interceptions there. C.J. Gable uh, had a 15 carries for 55 yards on the ground here, so he wasn't wasn't able to penetrate as much in the Hamilton defense there. Seavers, Tavares Daniels actually had a big game. He had seven catches for 109 yards. He had a touchdown there, so definitely they came in handy there with the all the times he was at the Stampeders playing big games. And same Craig Ellenson, uh, Harris, who definitely has chemistry with him. He had seven catches for 73 yards. And then on the defensive side of the ball for the Eskimos, it was both Brandon Walker and Josh Johnson. Each had six tackles. And Sean White, he was 3-3 three through three for field goals, including the longest of 49 yards there. So that was a quick recap of the and highlights of the Eastern File there. It essentially went as expected here. The Western File, this one definitely... I was looking more forward to because I was anticipating a much closer matchup plus the heated rivalry <coughs> with the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders here. As you mentioned, uh, the game for the Edmonton Hamilton game was at Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton. This game was at the you know, Mosaic Sam in Saskatchewan here. Ultimately, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers won this game 20-13 to here. Winnipeg had a 11-4 to lead at halftime there, and how I can highlight this game is that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers were able to make big plays in the 82 and offense. Their defense definitely stood up, especially in the red zone, because uh, you could say that Saskatchewan could have won this game if they would have punched in their opportunities in the red zone. They only scored three points there, and oh yeah, there definitely was lots of drama there at the end here because. There was one play that uh, he was 20 to 13 along the fourth quarter there. There was one play there that uh, well, I remember Winnipeg was playing the ball there, and I'm not too sure if it was a trick play or not. But they favored that they were favored to attack going one way, thinking they were going after that one player. But then they punted the ball the other way, so uh, there was definitely almost looked like a run back there. But uh, Winnipeg was able to eventually recover from that. However, it was the last drive there that uh, it looked like uh, Saskatchewan had one last life there. And uh, remember the third last play there, it was third down, and Saskatchewan had to go for a touchdown and get the Pomfort to force the skin to overtime. That play, I remember, it almost got intercepted, and at the same time, Saskatchewan had to make a remarkable catch to keep the game alive. But it was, it was actually a shame that... Uh, the game ended on a dead ball as Cody Fajardo threw the pass on the upright. So uh, that was a dead ball there. So ultimately Winnipeg was able to hang on and get to the Grey Cup. So the numbers here for both sides here. And also I should mention that Cody Fajardo also had oblique injuries too and he was battling for that. So for the Winnipeg move on our side of the ball here, Zach Claros, he was 17 for 25. He threw for... 267 yards and a touchdown there, so he had a solid game there. Andrew Harris, the running back, he actually, Saskatchewan's defense, must have watched the Calgary game very closely because they definitely were prepared for the running attack here because Andrew Harris, he had 10 carries for only 41 yards there. And Chris Strebler did not have as big of a rushing game against Saskatchewan as he did against Calgary in the West semifinal. Saver, Darvin Adams led the way with four catches for 93 yards. He's having one nice run here. And then on the defensive side of the ball, Winston Rhodes, he had eight tackles, including one interception there, which uh, came at a huge time in the second half. And then Justin Medlap, the kicker, he was 4-4 four in four field goals, including the longest one at 43 yards. So on the Saskatchewan side of the ball here, Cody Fajardo, he was 27 for 41 yards for 366 yards he threw there. Didn't have any touchdowns thrown, but one interception here, so Saskatchewan definitely... Played well between the 20s and got a lot of yards there, but as I mentioned, they didn't punch you, and they did. Wayne Powell, he only had eight carries for 48 yards here, so uh, the big free agent sign didn't <clears throat> necessarily pay off for Saskatchewan in this game here. Receivers, well, two guys definitely stood out for Saskatchewan. First, Kyron Moore, he had nine catches for 119 yards, so he was the leading receiver in that game. And then Avram Roosevelt, another big play receiver for the Riders. He had seven catches for 87 yards. And on the defensive side of the ball here, 
Solomon Elaminian, he definitely turned the clock back and had eight tackles there. And then Brett Lowther, the field goal kicker for the Sketch and Rough Riders, he was 4 for 4, including the longest uh, 42 yards there. So that's my quick summary and going over the numbers of the two games of the East and West Finals there. So, as I say, the 107 Grey Cup will feature the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Hamilton Tiger Cats here. So, when it comes to the records here, Winnipeg is technically going to be the home team here. However, they said they're not going to wear their blue jerseys. Well, they've actually had a lot wearing their white jerseys since the playoff run. So, apparently, uh, does that mean that Hamilton's going to wear their black jerseys at this game here? But the records here, to recap, Winnipeg Blue Bombers, they were 11-7. and seven, which put them third in the uh, West Division there. They were 8-1 at home at IG Field there. But they were 3-6 and six on the road there. But they've won two playoff games on the road to get here. But And they were respectable 4-4 four and four versus the East there. So that's the record story. For the Winnipeg Blue Bombers here. Now to Tire Cats. Well, they were 15-3 and three there. Franchise best in their franchise history there. Lando Steinhauer tied Dave Dickinson's rookie coaching record for 15 wins in their first season as coach. Obviously 15-3, but the first in the East here. They were perfect 9-0 at home, and they definitely stayed perfect with the big win against Edmonton at the Eastern Final there. They were 6-3 on the road, and they were 8-2 versus the West here. So uh, that's the record stories for the records here. Season series here. If you go all the way back to week seven here, and I believe this was the game that Jeremiah Mazzoli actually got hurt. And then Dean Evans took over. However, uh, this game was in Hamilton here for week seven. The Hamilton Tigers still won that game 23-15 to there. <coughs> Winnipeg still had Matt Nichols that game, and he struggled. And then week 16, this game was in Hamilton, or in Winnipeg this time. But the Hamilton Tiger Cats beat the... Uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers 33 to 13 here, and Chris Stradler was the quarterback at the time for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and he did put over 300 yards there, but he also kind of struggled through that game. So in the regular season, Hamilton won both games against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers here, but that was just before Winnipeg heat up here down the stretch here. So when it comes to playoff history here, there's going to be two parts of it here because. Uh, it hasn't been since 1984 that these two teams have played each other for the Grey Cup. However, with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers spending much of their history in the East Division here, these two teams have played each other seven times for divisional play. So I'm going to quickly go over that. So the last time that these two teams technically played each other in the playoffs, you've got to go all the way back to the 2011 East Final here as the game was in Winnipeg and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers beat the Hamilton Tiger Cats 19-3 to that that year so Winnipeg eventually went to the Grey Cup in Vancouver that year and lost to the Lions and that was actually the last time the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have gone to the Grey Cup and then uh, last time before that when they played each other was the 2001 Eastern Final that game also was in Winnipeg and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers beat the Hamilton Tiger Cats 28-13 there. So that season, the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers went on to play the to Montreal to play the Calgary Stampeders in the Grey Cup that year and <clears throat> and got upset by the Calgary Stampeders that season because Winnipeg was heavily favored. Then. And then before that, they actually played each other again the year before, the 2000 Eastern semifinal. This game was in Hamilton. But the Winnipeg Blue Bombers just barely beat the Hampton Tiger Cats 22 to 20 that game. So uh, another team went to the Grey Cup that year. And then before that, if you go to the 1993 East Final, the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers, this game was in Winnipeg, so Winnipeg was hosting it. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers won a close one against the Hampton Tiger Cats 20 to 19. And that year, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers actually went to Calgary for the Grey Cup, but then they lost to the Edmonton Eskimos that year. And then the year before that, in the Eastern Final in 1992, this game was in Winnipeg, and it was a blow as the Winnipeg Blue Bombers destroyed the Hamilton Tiger Cats 59-11 there, 
And that year, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers went to Toronto for the Grey Cup, and they lost to the Calgary Stampeders that year. Now, if you go all the way back to 1989, in the Eastern Final year, Hamilton was hosting the Grey Cup, or the Eastern Final that year, not the Grey Cup. And actually, the Hamilton Tiger Cats actually won this game 14 to 10 there. And then that year, the Hamilton Tiger Cats went to Toronto to take on the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and they lost to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on a last second field goal there by Dave Ridgway, as some would say that was the greatest Grey Cup game of all time there. And then the last time for divisional play, it was the 1988 Eastern semifinal here as the Winnipeg Blue Bombers were hosting that game. And the Winnipeg Blue Bombers defeated the Hamilton Tiger Cats 35-28 to that season. And the Winnipeg Blue Bombers eventually went on to win the Grey Cup in 1988 there. So in the seven uh, divisional games here, Winnipeg has a 6-1 to edge there if you were following along here. So now, this is Grey Cup history. This is going to be the ninth time that these two teams will play each other for the Grey Cup here. The last time, as I mentioned, was back in 1984. It was the 72nd Grey Cup that was in Edmonton that year. And the Winnipeg Blue Bombers destroyed the Hamilton Tiger Cats 47-17 to that year. So hopefully it will be a much closer game for my consolation matchup this season. And then before that, the Hamilton Tiger Cats and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers did not meet until it was the 1965 Grey Cup. So after even going back here, in the 1965 Grey Cup, it was the 53rd Grey Cup in Toronto here. They had the Hamilton Tiger Cats actually win the Grey Cup 22-16 to that season there. And then three years before that, in 1962, the 50th Grey Cup, which is also in, in Toronto. We're going back to when all the Grey Cups games were used to be held in Toronto here. So in the 1962 here, you had the Winnipeg Blue Bombers just nearly defeating the Hamilton Tiger Cats 28-27 to there. And I believe that was actually the famous or infamous Fog Bowl there, where... They needed two games to play that game. Yeah, I think that was the Fog Bowl because I know Winnipeg just beat Hamilton by one point in that Grey Cup. So yeah, I think that was the Fog Bowl there. However, they actually played the year before in 1961. This was the 49th Grey Cup in Toronto here. And the that Grey Cup, it was the, uh, Hamilton Tiger, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers defeating the Hamilton Tiger Cats 21 to 14 there and then they met again before if you go back two years in 1959 for the 47th Grey Cup in Toronto here that Grey Cup the Winnipeg Blue Bombers also beat the Hamilton Tiger Cats 21 to 7 there and then the year before in the 1958 the 46th Grey Cup this one was actually at Vancouver and it was the Winnipeg Blue Bombers defeating the Hamilton Tiger Cats 35 to 28 there. And then they actually met the year before that in 1957 here. The 45th Grey Cup in Toronto here. This time the Hamilton Tiger Cats defeated the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 32 to 7 here. And then the last one in the modern area, which I believe actually this was the first year of the modern CFL era they call it in 1953, the 41st Grey Cup. In Toronto here, the Hamilton Tiger Cats defeated the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 12-6 here. So if you're following along here, of the eight matchups in the modern era, Winnipeg has a 5-3 advantage there. And then they actually met a couple times, these two cities met a couple times in the uh, pre-modern era. So we're going further back here. It's fascinating if you go to Wikipedia there and look at the list of Grey Cup champions. And eventually it was the Rugby Championship and... Our Canadian game revolved from rugby here. There's a lot of interesting teams that won the earlier Grey Cups here, and some of these earlier teams actually merged to become the modern-day teams. So in the pre-modern era, in the 1943, this was the 31st Grey Cup in Toronto here, you had the Hamilton Flying Wildcats defeat the Winnipeg RCAF, Royal Canadian Air Force Bombers, for 23-14 there. And then the last, last one in the pre-modern era, and actually they count this as the first Grey Cup 
win for this team that in the 1935, the 23rd Great Cup in Toronto here, it was the Winnipeg Pigs that defeated the Hamilton Tigers 18 to 12 here. So in the pre-modern era, each team split here. So all time here, Great Cup all time records here. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers are 10 and 14 here. So this is the 25th time that they're going to play for the Great Cup. And actually of all the teams in the CFL now, this is actually the team that's been to the Great Cup the most. As it hasn't been happening recent year, let's say, when I've been around. But uh, they definitely meant a lot when you go further back to your parents or grandparents when they were uh, kids or young adults here. So the Winnipeg Blue Bombers... Actually, have 10 Grey Cup wins in the franchise history. They won in 1935, 1939, 1941, 1958, 1959, 1961, 1962, 1984, 1988, and they last won it in 1990. So we're talking 29 years that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have not won the Grey Cup. Winnipeg's last appearance in the Grey Cup was the 99th Great Cup in 2011, that was held in Vancouver, and it was the host BC Lions that defeated the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 34-23 to there. And uh, I'm going to say since the last win in 1990 here, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have been 0-5 because they lost to Calgary in 1992, they lost to Edmonton in 1993, then they lost to Calgary again in 2001. And then they lost to Saskatchewan in 2007, and then they lost to BC in 2011 there. So that's the Winnipeg side of the ball there. Hamilton Tiger Cats, well, they're also under 500 when it comes to uh, Grey Cup record, as they're 8 and 12 here, and they're listed that they won the Grey Cup eight times here, as they first won it in 1953, 1957, 1963. 1965, 1967, Canada Centennial, 1972, and actually Hamilton won it at home that year as Hamilton hosted the Grey Cup in 1972, and then they won it in 1986, and they last won it in 1999 there. So we're talking about uh, 20 years for the Hamilton Tiger Cats since they last won the Grey Cup. So you got 20 years versus 29 years. Somebody's going to have to win, as I say. The last appearance for the uh, Grey Cup appearance for the Hamilton Tire Cats actually happened back in 2014. The 102nd Grey Cup, which also coincidentally was in Vancouver here, was in Vancouver, and the Calgary Stampeders defeated the Hamilton Tire Cats. 2016 there, that was with that Brandon Manx looked like he returned the punt return for a touchdown, and Legal block wiped it out, and Calgary was able to hang on. And that happened to also be my first Grey Cup that I went to out of town, where I actually packed my bags and went out of town and got to see my team win it live there. Got a little hairy at the end there. Hamilton Tiger Cats, uh, they're 0 2 since they last won the Grey Cup in uh, 1999 here. Although it wasn't back to back years that they were on the wrong end of the Grey Cup, because after 1999, they did not make it to the Grey Cup. Until 2013, and they lost to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in Saskatchewan there. And then in 2014, they lost to the Calgary Stampeders. So, uh, I say, somebody's got to give. Somebody's got to win. And to add another kicker to this, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers went to Calgary and lost the only time that the Grey Cup was in Calgary. However, the Hamilton Tiger Cats, although this is regular season play, have not won at McMahon st Stadium since 2004. So, something really has to give here. So, before I get to the actual uh, matchup here, because there's a ton of history to go over here, here are some defunct teams that uh, play for the Grey Cup for both cities here. As I mentioned, you got the Winnipeg RCAF Bombers. They were 0 2 in the Grey Cup. They also had, there was a team called the Winnipeg Tammy Tigers. They played for the Grey Cup once and lost. So those are the two defunct Ham Winnipeg teams. Hamilton had three defunct teams that played for the Grey Cup. You had the Hamilton Alerts, their only appearance, they won it. Then you had the Hamilton Flying Wildcats, they were 1-1 one one in Grey Cups they played in. And the Hamilton Tigers, they were 5-3. and three. 
And then for both teams here, well, eventually, uh, with rugby and football, how our game evolved from rugby here, eventually you had the Hamilton Flying Wildcats and the Hamilton Tigers. They eventually merged to become today's Hamilton Tiger Cats in 1950 there. So you can look that up for history there. And then the Winnipeg RCF Bombers eventually became today's Winnipeg Blue Bombers here. So uh, that's a lot of history there and uh, going over the finals game. So now let's actually get to the matchup here. But it gives you an idea how rich in history that uh, the Great Cup is, is in Canada, just like the Stanley Cup. And, uh, you know, we love our trophy. We love to keep our traditions alive here and, uh, you know, also the Great Cup festivities here and and the Calgary Stampeders are my team so I always wear red for the Great Cup regardless if my team's in it or not here so uh, anyway let's actually now break down the matchup today to see who I think is ultimately going to win the 107 Great Cup and who's ultimately going to end their respective drought here and be happier than that three-legged lab that I see sometimes that I walk in before I go to work there so quarterback here, the most important position here. You got Zach Caleros for Winnipeg here. Who would have thought that at the start of the year? That eventually Zach Caleros was going to be playing for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and in the Grey Cup. But you can also say the flip side for Dane Evans for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. So that's the matchup for the quarterback here. I give the edge to Hamilton here as Dane Evans had his big game. First professional start here. So I'm going to give the slight edge to Evans because... Uh, he definitely has a more important passing attack here, and he has proven already this season he can put up over 400 yard games here. However, running back here, well, obviously you got Andrew Harris for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, maybe Tyrell Sutton for the Hamilton. He did not play in the Eastern Final there. And other options that uh, both teams have as well, obviously you got Chris Strebler, the quarterback for Winnipeg, and Cameron Marshall. For the Hamilton Tiger Cats here. However, just like all throughout the playoffs here, and the fact that Winnipeg is the best rushing team in the league here, I give the edge to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers here when it comes to the run game here. Receiver here, this is definitely going to be a fun matchup here. I mean, Darwin Adams has led the way for the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers here. But, you know, we got. Uh, also, uh, he's going to be faced up against uh, for Hamilton. They got their dual threat with Braylon Anderson and Brandon Banks. So I think just those two guys alone will give uh, the edge to Hamilton there. I mean, both teams have complementary receivers. I mean, you obviously got Darvin Adams here, but you got uh, the big name receivers, and that's going to make the big difference here. So for the offensive line here, the guys up front. To protect their quarterback and the running back there. Winnipeg, I mean, they're obviously led by Jamarcus Hardrick and Stanley Bryan here. However, Hamilton, they got Chris Van Sile, a longtime veteran, and Mike Fowler and Brent Ravenberg here. However, I can see this being a push here. I don't really see anybody standing out overall here on the offensive line here. So that's the offensive side of the ball here that I think uh, Hamilton might have the, has the edge in terms of passing. But Winnipeg has the edge in rushing here, so uh, that's going to be the big matchup there, chess matchup you shall see there. So on the defensive side of the ball here, well, we've got Willie Jefferson. He's definitely a beast for the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers here. Hamilton, I mean, they got Taylor Rod, Dillon, and Jagir Davis, who Jagir Davis, since he's been in the CFL, has only played for the CFA Cup, it seems like. However, I like this matchup for being a push here. I can see uh, both big play guys on the defensive line here. So the linebackers here. So Winnipeg has Adam Big Hill, although he got shaken up there late in the Western foul there. And he also got Kyrie Wilson. However, Hamilton, love him or hate him, is led by Somali Lawrence. And they got Justin Double here, who has some football in his bloodlines as his father played in the NFL there. So I'm going to give the edge to Hamilton there in the second level on the defense there. So the defensive backs here, these are the guys who, uh, you know, go after the ball hawks or interceptions and that. I mean, you got to watch out for Winston Rose and Marcus Hales for the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers here. However, 
Hamilton is still stacked. If you look at my Eastern Final Preview, they're, they're as a collective group, they're really stacks the Hamilton Tiger Cats. So the Hamilton Tiger Cats definitely have the edge when it comes to the to the secondary there. So uh, when I'm looking at the defensive side of the ball here, I like the matchup at the defensive line there, which will be interesting when I also like the matchup where I think it's even both in the offensive line and the defensive line here. However, when you get to levels two and three, Hamilton seems to have the edge there, and that's been their bread and butter. And why Hamilton has had a lot of success this season with their defense, but it's not a surprise when you have a defensive-minded head coach there. So now let's take a look at the special teams here. And another exciting matchup I'm going to look forward to is the return game here. As you got Janarian Grant for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers here, and you got Frankie Williams for the Hamilton Tiger Cats here. However, if it's a tight game, sometimes Brandon Banks is also used for the return game for Hamilton here. This is a push here. I can't see uh, anyone having an edge here. There's a both dynamite defenders here, and uh, hopefully uh, maybe they can provide some excitement here for uh, CFL fans alike who uh, don't know who I really could pull for for the Grey Cup here. Last thing on the special teams is the kicking game here, as uh, both teams have a kick out of both kicks and punts here. You got Justin Medlock for Winnipeg, and got Larry Harlarau for Hamilton here. Justin Medlock has a little more distance here. So I give the edge to Winnipeg there. So uh, that's what I like for the special teams here. So now the weather forecast here. It should be an, actually a decent day for the uh, 107 Grey Cup in Calgary here. They're forecasting the high at 4 and sunny. However, the game doesn't start till uh, 4 o'clock at McMahon Stadium here. So it'll be sun setting. But they're forecasting minus 7 and clear. So it's definitely going to be around... 0 to minus 2, minus 3. Not sure it's the t-shirt weather, but definitely beats minus 15 from two weeks ago for the West semifinal year. So uh, definitely should be a more comfortable game for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers coming back to Calgary this time. So now here we go to the uh, this team will win if, as I get towards the end here. Winnipeg will win the Grey Cup if. If Zach Caleros continues to spray the ball here and... Uh, Continuing his late season magic here, definitely be a, a great story here. And, you know, last week was definitely the big storyline for Zach Caleros in terms of going back to Saskatchewan and ultimately haunting his team when he got traded to Toronto and Toronto traded him to Winnipeg. As you recall, Zach Caleros was the quarterback for the Hamilton Tiger Cats when he last went to the Grey Cup here. So that's another storyline here. Winnipeg will win the game if... Andrew Harris has a big game if they win the run game. If they have more success with the two-pronged quarterback attack, with Chris Strubler as well. Winnipeg will win if they suppress Brandon Bakes and Braylon Addison here. Those are definitely the two big play receivers there, but then you got Luke Taster could also step up too in receivers. So uh, their uh, secondary definitely going to have to step up and suppress the passing attack for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And I'd say, hey, if Winnipeg will win, if they pressure uh, Dane Evans there, as he's definitely had lots of protection up to this point here. So uh, those are my points I think that would take for Winnipeg to win. Hamilton will win the Grey Cup if, if Dane Evans, if he continues his air attack as he has up to this point here. So uh, if he definitely has a big individual performance here, Dane Evans will definitely make a new legend for himself in Hamilton here. Hamilton will win if they step up their run game. If it's Terrell Sutton, if he comes in, or Cameron Marshall here. I'm going to say if Hamilton outruns Winnipeg, which will be a huge tall task here. But if they do that, I think they'll likely win the game here. And then, as I mentioned, when it put pressure on Winnipeg, drown in air attacks. If uh, I'm going to say the Winnipeg Hamilton secondary definitely is stacked to frustrate Winnipeg receivers there. And, uh, you know, Darvin Adams has definitely stepped up, but you also got, you know, Nick Dembski for Winnipeg, Kenny Lawler, and uh, Rasheed Bailey, and Drew Altarski. There have been some amount of receivers too. If they're all frustrated by Hamilton's secondary, I think Hamilton will win the Grey Cup. And I'm going to put down stand-on stand special teams. If, 
you know, Frankie Williams or uh, Brandon Banks does this thing. Has a big groundbreaking return for field position, not necessarily for a touchdown. I think Hamilton will win here. And then for both sides here, this will pertain to both sides. It's always the cliche, win the turnover battle and not take too many penalties. And ultimately, it's going to come down to who's hungrier. Who is more hungrier to uh, end their drought and take the rake up back home for one of their respective cities here, as I said. It's been 29 years since the Winnipeg Blue Bombers last won the Grey Cup. And it's been 20 years since the Hamilton Tiger Cats have last won the Grey Cup. No way you can spin it is that both of these teams are looking for their first Grey Cup win in the 21st century and probably will have their first Grey Cup look back actually on DVD instead of VHS here. As you see those old memes here too. So who do I ultimately think is going to win the Grey Cup? The 107 Grey Cup and their drought. And uh, what is my confidence level here? And I considered you know, things. I mean, you look at uh, the matchup here and the records and how they did in the regular season here. However, sometimes you can throw that out the window here. Where sometimes the favorite does perform and wins as expected here. But sometimes the underdog, they have that it factor. And I think the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have the it factor here. So my pick for who I think is going to win the 107 Grey Cup, I think it's going to be the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, but I'm only going to give them a 40% confidence here. My confidence isn't as high as it could be when I say I'm more confident this team's going to win. Just because of the varying factors that favor the Hamilton Tiger Cats, but, you know, Winnipeg seems to have that it factor right now. You know, like say, for example, the 2004 Calgary Flames. They had the it factor that year that led them all the way to the Stanley Cup final year. And, and the thing is, as a CFL fan, and this was the matchup that I wanted if Calgary was not going to be in the Grey Cup, I would like to see Zach Claros get a Grey Cup. I also like to see Brandon Biggs get a great cup and they face either way and I like, I mean, Michael Shea has definitely evolved as a head coach and, you know, the fan bases. I mean, I've seen the fan bases over the years at great cups and at festivities and, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I, I feel for them. I mean, they're, they're both great people and they're not too boastful in pride, except maybe on Labor Day for their respective teams on Labor Day, but it happens to all of us. But, uh, I mean, a uh, couple things that stand out here for Winnipeg that I definitely would like to see him get a great cup here. Well, there's this, this silly story that you see that his name is Chris Matthew. Not, not to be confused with Chris Matthews, the former receiver that played in the CFL and NFL. Apparently Chris Matthew, back in 2001, he made a bet saying he's not going to wear pants until the Winnipeg Blue Bombers won the great cup. Well, back in 2001, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers looked like, oh, for sure, they're going to beat the Gutter Stampeders for the Grey Cup, and he'd get to wear pants. Well, unfortunately, we did upset the Winnipeg Blue Bombers back in 2001, and as I said, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have not won since 1990. So, uh, this guy has been wearing shorts since then. He says he wears pants to funerals in his family, or anybody doesn't know about the bet that he has, but... Doesn't say if he's a courier, but it wouldn't surprise me if he's a courier because courier has their bets there. But the other piece of that, going back to the fan base here, is that I mentioned earlier in the video that I went to the 102nd Grey Cup where I got to enjoy watching my Calgary Stampeders win with the Hamilton Tiger Cat fans, unfortunately, losing in their back to back Grey Cup here. That time it was only my third Grey Cup. This year will be number seven here. And I was, you know, I was obviously jumped for joy, shedding tears here. I, I think his name is Doug. I forget his name, but he had his wife with him. And he definitely put it in perspective to me that uh, he said that he was jealous and lucky of me that I got to celebrate my team winning. It was only my third grade cup that I ever gone to. And, and then Calgary had their, uh, in the last 25 years, have been the more... Most, most successful winningest team here, but at that time, this was back in 2014, 
he said that that was his 24th Grey Cup. And he has not seen his team win the Grey Cup live. So I definitely got to think of him if Winnipeg wins, and who knows. Wouldn't it be neat if I bumped into him and say, if I do, I say, enjoy the frick out of it, buddy. But then when it comes to the Hamilton side as well, I mean, it would be nice to see, you know, Brandon Bakes get his ring after uh, seeing the heartbreak on his face when that illegal block happened, that wiped that out punt return there. And then, you know, you got the Box J boys. I know they're a proud fan base, but Hamilton's definitely a proud uh, CFL city that, uh, you know, they had some lean times. And Bob Young, the owner, he definitely has taken great care of the Hamilton Tire Cats. They saved him from bankruptcy there and, you know, gives you an idea how quickly things can turn around here. It was just two years ago that we beat the Hamilton Tire Cats 60 to 1 here at McMahon. And, you know, I would definitely like to see Brandon Bakes. I mean, the team hasn't won it in 20 years there. And uh, um, that was all my time I hear on Facebook. I would actually rec recommend you follow this guy. He actually calls himself CFL Hobo. I think his actual name is Jason. You know, it would be interesting if I do see him. I would definitely want to try to have a picture of him. But he calls himself CFL Hobo. He has a blog that he puts on Facebook there. And, uh... He definitely, actually, as of this recording, he drove all the way from Hamilton, right on to Canada, and he arrived in Calgary. And I mean, this guy I definitely would do what he did. It's a little crazy, but I definitely don't have the time like he does to go all over the country here. But he's been to like every stadium in the summer here, and he'll be here in Calgary. But I'll definitely, if Hamilton does, you know, win the Grey Cup. He'll be one of the guys I thought about. And actually, uh, if you go back to my former player, I used to work with a work with a guy that uh, he came from Hamilton. And he, you know, sometimes he shows his Hamilton jersey in my face. But, uh, you know, it would be nice if he ever gets the experience to win. And who knows, maybe I'll see him at the Great Cup too. But, uh, yeah, I would just say, say thanks for uh, following along here. I, I mean, this is definitely a preview plus more here. And... This is why I really like this matchup overall. If my Calgary Stampeders are in it, aren't in it, but uh, I'm gonna say if this seems, I'm gonna say yeah. Thanks for watching along here, and you know if you enjoy everything I do on my YouTube channel, just uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and follow along. I do obviously Calgary sports here, and I'll recap the Grey Cup game on my bonus eighth episode of my Calgary Stampeders this month. So I'll recap the run for the Calgary Stampeders and the 107 Grey Cup. What happens there, but I also cover uh, both the Flames and Hitmen and the Rough next year and do personal vlogs and uh, attempt a comedy here and hopefully uh, I can't get more subscribers here because as it is recording, I'm one short for breaking the Magic 100. And they say the first 100 subscribers is the hardest to get here. And uh, I'm going to say, yeah, thanks for watching along. Thanks for Follow along here, and I'll enjoy the festivities, and definitely looking forward to seeing all CFL fans coming to my city here in Calgary, and I'll wear my red, represent, you know, Calgary Stampeders with uh, pride there, and even even the green fans. I'll, I'll enjoy celebrating with the Eskimo and Ryder fans too, but uh, it's definitely a beautiful, unique thing about this country here is uh, you get fans that come all over and, uh, you know, take in the city, take in the festivities, and then ultimately the game itself. And uh, this year will actually mark my seventh Grey Cup, third time that I got to stay home for the Grey Cup. And uh, I'm always glad to be that guy that will represent Calgary Stampeders and, uh, you know, stay safe, enjoy the uh, Grey Cup festivities, and uh, I'll see you in the next video and follow my Calgary Stampeders this month for... Episode 8 after the Grey Cup when I'll recap ultimately who ends this lengthy drought. You think in that 8 9 team league that it's incredible that you got one team that hasn't won in 20 years and then another team that hasn't won in 29 years. And I'm sure it probably doesn't, they don't like the fact that the other were Red Blacks. They came back and won their, uh, you know, made their first appearance in the Grey Cup, their second year in, and their third year they won the Grey Cup. That is almost like if the Toronto, if another team joins the NHL and they're based out of Toronto and they 
win the Stanley Cup in their second or third year, and the Toronto Maple Leafs are still kind of on their uh, lengthy drought here, but that's enough jokes aside there, so I'm going to say thanks for watching. Go Stamps go, even though my team is in, in it, but, uh, you know, may the best team win, may the hungriest team win, and I always enjoy the Great Cup, and I'll see you in the next video.